Ciao amici! Benvenuti alla bella Roma! That's Italian for Hello friends! Welcome to beautiful Rome! Today we will continue our amazing journey throughout Rome, the eternal city. No discussion about art and religion can be complete without a tour of Vatican City, where we can find St. Peter's Basilica, the Vatican Museums, and the Sistine Chapel. Vatican City, with its 1,000 residents, occupies less than a square mile, but has its own radio station, newspaper, post office, and even a small train station. It's been a sovereign state since 1929 and is the smallest independent city-state in the world. Vatican City may be small in geography, but it possesses immense global power. As the head of the Catholic Church, it is a strong influence in the daily lives of more than 1.2 billion people worldwide. The popes have lived here in Vatican City since the end of the 14th century. Then and now, the city-state is surrounded by a medieval wall which helps define its borders. Protecting the Pope at all times is the Swiss Guard. Do not let the uniform fool you. These are highly trained and skilled soldiers. As the name implies, the Swiss Guard are elite military personnel from Switzerland and their uniforms were designed by Michelangelo. The centerpiece of Vatican City is St. Peter's Square, known as Piazza San Pietro, here in Rome. It may not come as a surprise to know that this majestic square was designed by none other than Bernini, and is considered to be another of his architectural marvels. The columns, or colonnades, that create the majestic perimeter are crowned with the statues of 140 saints, all gazing down over the piazza. To the right of the basilica are the papal apartments. When in town, the Pope appears in a window here each Sunday to bless the faithful gathered here at St. Peter's. Dominating the piazza is the largest of all Christian buildings, St. Peter's Basilica. It is believed to stand on the spot where the Apostle Peter was buried after his crucifixion by the Romans. The Borghese Gardens are popular with Romans and visitors alike. Just like this place, the always bustling Piazza Navona. It's a busy square where you can find street artists, outdoor cafes, restaurants, and gelato stands. It was designed by, you guessed it, Bernini, and built on the ruins of Emperor Domitian Stadium. The crowning glory of the piazza is the Fountain of the Four Rivers, another Bernini design. It sounds more fascinating, though, when we call it by its Italian name, Fontana de i Quattro Fiumi. We can see four figures representing the four corners of the known world at the time. A short walk away is the iconic Pantheon, a pagan temple that became a church and is now a monument. The word Pantheon means all gods, and it's where the many gods of the empire were once worshipped. Its grand and imposing presence has symbolized Roman greatness since antiquity. The Pantheon is one of two monuments belonging to ancient Rome that has survived undamaged. It was completed in 27 BCE and is the best preserved building from the Roman Empire. It's also considered to be one of the greatest buildings in the history of European architecture. Proudly for the Romans, it's one of the few ancient buildings that have been in continuous use for more than 2,000 years, and is the burial place of kings, queens, and several painters, including Raphael. The Pantheon has been a source of inspiration to architects all over the world through the ages. And long before there was the Dome of St. Peter's, there was the Dome of the Pantheon. We hope you enjoy traveling in the footsteps of time with us today, as we explore the many ways that Rome has earned its title as the Eternal City. Arrivederci!